Chapter Ten of Elusive Isabel. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Roger Moline. Elusive Isabel by Jacques Futrell. Chapter Ten: A Safe Opening. Together they entered the adjoining room, which was small compared to the one they had just left. Senor Rodriguez used it as a private office. His desk was on their right, between two windows overlooking the same pleasant little garden which was visible from the suite of tiny drawing rooms farther along. The safe, a formidable-looking receptacle of black enameled steel, stood at their left, closed and locked. The remaining wall space of the room was given over to oak cabinets, evidently a storage place for the less important legation papers. "'Has anyone besides yourself been in this room today?' Mr. Grimm inquired. "'Not a soul, senor,' was the reply. Mr. Grimm went over and examined the windows. They were both locked inside, and there were no marks of any sort on the sills. They are just as I left them last night, explained Senor Rodriguez. I have not touched them today. And there's only one door, mused Mr. Grimm, meaning that by which they had entered. So it would appear that whoever was here last night entered through that room. Very well. He walked around the room once, opening and shutting the doors of the cabinets as he passed, and finally paused in front of the safe. A brief examination of the nickeled dial and handle, and of the enameled edges of the heavy door, satisfied him that no force had been employed. The safe had merely been unlocked. Whereupon he sat himself down, cross-legged, on the floor in front of it. "'What are the first and second figures of the combination?' he asked. Thirty-six, then back to ten. Mr. Grimm set the dial at thirty-six and then, with his ear pressed closely against the polished door, turned the dial slowly back. Senor Rodriguez stood looking on helplessly, but nonetheless intently. The pointer read ten, then nine, eight, seven, five. Mr. Grimm gazed at it thoughtfully, after which he did it all over again, placidly and without haste. "'Now we'll look inside, please,' he requested, rising. Senor Rodriguez unlocked the safe, the while Mr. Grimm respectfully turned his eyes away, then pulled the door wide open. The books had been piled one on top of another and thrust into various pigeonholes at the top. Mr. Grimm understood that this disorder was the result of making room at the bottom for the bulk of gold, and asked no questions. Instead, he sat down upon the floor again. "'The lock on this private compartment at the top is broken,' he remarked after a moment. "'Si, senor,' the diplomatist agreed. "'Evidently the robbers were not content with only fifty thousand dollars in gold. They imagined that something else of value was hidden there.' "'Was there?' asked Mr. Grimm naively. He didn't look around. "'Nothing of monetary value,' the senor explained. "'There were some important state papers in there. "'They are there yet. "'But no money.' "'None of the papers were stolen?' "'No, senor. "'There were only nine packets. "'They are there yet.' "'Contents all right?' "'Yes. "'I personally looked them over.' Mr. Grimm drew out the packets of papers, one by one. They were all unsealed, save the last. When he reached for that, Senor Rodriguez made a quick, involuntary motion toward it with his hand. "'This one's sealed,' commented Mr. Grimm. "'It doesn't happen that you opened it and sealed it again.' Senor Rodriguez stood staring at him blankly for a moment. Then some sudden apprehension was aroused, for a startled look came into his eyes, and again he reached for the packet. Dios mio! he exclaimed. Let me see, senor. Going to open it? 
asked Mr. Grimm. Yes, senor, I had not thought of it before. Mr. Grimm rose and walked over to the window where the light was better. He scrutinized the sealed packet closely. There were three red splotches of wax upon it, each impressed with the legation seal. The envelope was without marks otherwise. He turned and twisted it aimlessly, and peered curiously at the various seals, after which he handed it to the frankly impatient diplomatist. Senor Rodriguez opened it with nervous twitching fingers. Mr. Grimm had turned toward the safe again, but he heard the crackle of parchment as some document was drawn out of the envelope, and then came a deep sigh of relief. Having satisfied his sudden fears for the safety of the paper, whatever it was, the senor placed it in another envelope and sealed it again with elaborate care. Mr. Grimm dropped into the swivel chair at the desk. Senor, he inquired pleasantly, your daughter and Miss Thorne were in this room yesterday afternoon? Yes, replied the diplomatist, as if surprised at the question. What time, please? About three o'clock. They were going out driving. Why? And just where, please, did you find that handkerchief? Continued Mr. Grimm. Handkerchief? Repeated the diplomatist. You mean Miss Thorne's handkerchief? He paused and regarded Mr. Grimm keenly. Signor, what am I to understand from that question? It was plain enough, replied Mr. Grimm. Where did you find that handkerchief? There was silence for an instant. In this room? Yes, replied Senor Rodriguez at last. Near the safe? Mr. Grimm persisted. Yes, came the slow reply again. Just here, and he indicated a spot a little to the left of the safe. And when did you find it? Yesterday afternoon? Last night? This morning? This morning. And without any apparent reason, the diplomatist's face turned deathly white. But, senor, senor, you are mistaken. There can be nothing. A woman? Two hundred pounds of gold? Senor. Mr. Grimm was still pleasant about it. His curiosity was absolutely impersonal. His eyes, grown listless again, were turned straight into the other's face. If that handkerchief had been there last night, senor, he resumed quietly, wouldn't you have noticed it when you placed the gold in the safe? Senor Rodriguez stared at him a long time. I don't know, he said at last. He dropped back into a chair with his face in his hands. Senor, he burst out suddenly, impetuously, after a moment. If the gold is not recovered, I am ruined. You understand that better than I can tell you. It's the kind of thing that could not be explained to my government. He rose suddenly and faced the impassive young man with merciless determination in his face. You must find the gold, senor, he said. No matter who may be, who may suffer, inquired Mr. Grimm. Find the gold, senor. Very well, commented Mr. Grimm, without moving. Do me the favor, please, to regain possession of the handkerchief you just returned to Miss Thorne, and send to me here your secretary, Senor Diaz, and your servants, one by one. I shall question them alone. No, don't be alarmed. Unless they know of the robbery, they shall get no inkling of it from me. First, be good enough to replace the packet in the safe and lock it. Senor Rodriguez replaced the packet without question, afterward locking the door, then went out. A moment later, Senor Diaz appeared. He remained with Mr. Grimm for just eight minutes. Senor Rodriguez entered again as his secretary passed on and laid a lace handkerchief on the desk. Mr. Grimm stared at it curiously for a long time. It's the same handkerchief? Si, senor. There's no doubt whatever about it? No, senor, I got it by... It's of no consequence, interrupted Mr. Grimm. Now the servants, please. The men first. The first of the men servants was in the room two minutes. 
The second, the butler, was there five minutes. One of the women was not questioned at all. The other remained ten minutes. Mr. Grimm followed her into the hall. Senor Rodriguez stood there, helpless, impatient. Well, he demanded eagerly. I'm going out a little while, replied Mr. Grimm placidly. No one has even an intimation of the affair. Please keep the matter absolutely to yourself until I return. That was all. The door opened and closed, and he was gone. At the end of an hour he returned, passed on through to the diplomatist's private office, sat down in front of the locked safe again, and set the dial at thirty-six. Senor Rodriguez looked on, astonished, as Mr. Grimm pressed the soft rubber sounder of a stethoscope against the safe door and began turning the dial back toward ten, slowly, slowly. Thirty-five minutes later, the lock clicked. Mr. Grimm rose, turned the handle, and pulled the safe door open. That's how it was done, he explained to the amazed diplomatist. And now, please, have a servant hand my card to Miss Thorne. End of chapter 10 Recording by Roger Moline